Hello YouTube RJ. Hey, we're on the bench. Got some stuff in. If you a viewer on my channel, you know I'm working on a receiver, a shortwave receiver to put in our shootout, shortwave receiver kit shootout. Well, I got a few parts in. It's time to build a VFO. We have to uh, have to have something to control this thing with. So I got a few parts in. Let's get them open up and see what I got. And then we'll uh, we'll build stuff. We'll get a U uh, VFO built. Okay, what do we got here? We've got some rotary encoders. Okay. And let's see what we got here. We have, don't throw stuff away, RJ. We've got some ESP32 units and some TFT screens. With this stuff, I'm going to build a VFO. Now, this is not going to be my design. This is a design that's been out for a while. Um, I've always liked the looks of the display of this, the functionality. And I've decided that this receiver would be the right one to do it on. So, what we've got here is some little TFT screens, little 1.8 inch, 128 by 160 TFT screens. And we've got a couple ESP32 modules to control it. On top of that, we needed a rotary encoder to hook up to it. I got some of those. And so let me open one of each of these up and let you see them. And then I will get things wired up on a breadboard and try to load code and we'll see if we can get this thing working and we'll talk about it. Hopefully, since someone's already done this, and uh, it's been repeated numerous times, I would expect we could get this going pretty easily. But, you never know. So there's a rotary encoder for us. There's a ESP32 module for us. And let's open up one of the TFT screens take a look at it. There we go. Question is, can I take these parts, turn them into a VFO we can use? I don't know. Let's find out. I'll be back. Hey, I'm making a mess on the bench. I got the breadboards out. I've got all the wires. I'm making a rat nest. Probably going to set it on fire before it's over at my luck. But anyway, I got a little something working. Wanted to talk to you and show you. Ham from Japan created. It's called with JF3HZB. You may, you may have seen this. It was a really cool VFO based around the SI5351 DDS module that many people use building ham radio equipment and such. A really neat module. If you're not familiar with it, we'll go over that some a little later. But uh, anyway, he built this really neat looking VFO. Instead of having just a digital readout, it had a arced dial like the old radios. And when you turn the, turn the encoder, you didn't just change the digits, you rolled a numbered wheel showing you where you were. I thought it was really cool. I always thought it looked cool. I had ideas of building one and modernizing an old hot water 101 or something, taking the old plastic dowel out and replace with this and, and, you know, just didn't do anything with it for a long time. And so thinking about the easy SWR receiver, I said, I, that's what I want to do. You know, these little displays are cheap enough now the microcontrollers are cheap enough now. That's what I want to do in it. And I thought I'd give you a little view. Now, I'm working with the JF3HCB code that has been updated by DJ700, or I'm sorry, DJ700. It's pretty basic. It'll do everything I need it to do. The only thing I'm having problems with is, is the correction factor for the crystal, because every one of these SI5351 modules, the crystals are a little one way or another. You need to calibrate them. Now, there's some newer code I'm playing with called Not Just Another Digital VFO that's much more advanced. There's a lot of stuff I don't need. It's a, a much, much larger project. Having some trouble getting that working, it does have the correction stuff built into it. What I've been doing is I've been playing around with the code on this simpler one and tweaking it some, and I'm working on getting it to where I can put a correction factor in the EEPROM 
um, you know, plug it into a little test jig, calibrate it, store that in the EEPROM, use that to load each time. And that way I literally could take these things, pop them in a jig, calibrate them, literally with the kit, the Easy SW receiver kit, I can just ship out a controller that's already calibrated so that people can build it, don't have to worry about getting the module calibrated, not worrying about having to load the code on the microcontroller or any of that stuff. Make it very simple. The whole idea with the Easy SW receiver is just that. Make it easy where anybody that can basically use a soldering iron at all can build this thing successfully and not be the most sophisticated radio ever built, but a good performing radio that's very easy to build, very good instructions. And that would be like a stepping stone to help people get started in the hobby. And then we can go on more advanced stuff from there. So anyway, let me show you what I've got at the moment. I'll turn it on, power it up here. I'm powering it with USB, power it up. You'll see the splash screen with uh, their code, with their, uh, with their call signs, and then you'll see my little splash screen. And we come up and you, let me make sure this looks good. Okay, looks like we can see it on the camera good. Comes up at 3903 megahertz, and you can see the dial here. And here's my rotary coder over here. And if I turn it, you can see the display moves. I'm, I'm right now on one kilohertz. It tunes, it tunes up and down as, as you'd expect. So I've got a couple buttons here. And um, if I want to change, like if I want to move uh, less, I can go down to 100 hertz. Now we're going to move much less, all right? Or I can go up, let's say I want to go to... 10 kilohertz. Now we're moving 10 kilohertz. It will fly around a lot quicker. Or we can go to 100 kilohertz and move even faster. Or we can go up to 1 meg. And now I can move down and up by a meg really fast. So it's a really neat little display. And just, just in case, just in case you're not seeing this well enough, I'm going to kick the lights out for just a minute. And you're not going to be able to see anything but the display, but hopefully the display looks good. And so you can see as I turn what happens. Yeah. All right. I think it looks pretty good. I think it's going to be great on the little, re the little receiver as your, as your interface. That's where I'm at. Um, I'm going to jump over the computer now. I'm going to pull up the schematic, if you will, of this and a little bit, show you a little of the information and stuff, and, uh, and then we'll leave it at that. So this really was just kind of a walk you through what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. I would love comments back. You got a different opinion. You think this is a good idea or it's a bad idea. Hey, let me know. Post it in comments. Gives me food for thought. So let me jump on the computer real quick. In the description of the video, of course, post links to where you can find this stuff. And so here's the an Instructables page that I found that gave me all the links and everything I needed to find out about this display and VFO setup. And so you can see it talks about it, what you need to build it. So you, you can watch a YouTube video here about it. And there's even boards, but we're going to, I'm going to do my own board on this because it's all going to be on the same board. One, one board for the radio, but you can see goes through and here's the schematic. This is what's on my breadboard right now. This is your step up, step down buttons. I'm using the button on the rotary encoder for st to store the current frequency. Is Here's the SI5351A module. Uh, I'm powering on USB at the moment, but uh, of course we'll power it off the same source in the radio as the radio. And here's your little screen. Now, one of the benefits of not using the code I'm currently using and, and being able to go to the newer projects or they can they offer bigger screens but i don't know if we need a bigger screen for this little simple inexpensive radio so we'll probably stay with this but that, that's an option also going with a bigger screen going to like a 2.8 inch screen now the screen is about three times as much but uh, it is larger i don't know it'd be nice to keep the radio small so that's something i'll think about and so then it goes down and it has the you can download all of the files to compile up and uh, create this project and if I go, if I minimize this, here's what you get when you load it up. There's all the code and all the files. And uh, fairly straightforward. 
like I said, I'm playing with the code right now to try to get it a little better for us to be able to store the calibration. Really, that's all this needs. I, I don't need any other functions for just a receiver. But anyway, there is another project that is a possibility. There, the, the, it's as I mentioned, it's not just another digital VFO pro project. There's a couple guys that are working on this. They have slightly different setups. It uh, explains in here it's a heavily modified version of the VFO originally created by, which is the one I'm working with. Explains that it was basically a, a cool VFO, but they wanted to be able to build transceivers with it and have other features and use bigger screens and, uh, you know, use, uh, put clarifiers on there and, you know, display your transmit and receive status, add cat control, second VFO, function buttons, uh, battery monitor. I mean, they really stuff the kit, everything but the kitchen sink into, into this. It's, um, uh, it's got a lot in it. And so this is where you can find information about the VFO we're working with. With that, I think we're going to close out this video. Hey, appreciate you hanging out and checking out what I'm working on. I want to thank everybody that subscribed. If you haven't, give a thought to taking a moment and clicking the subscribe button. I also appreciate all of you who like my videos. If you found this video interesting and any benefit to you, please hit the like. Help spread the word, get the channel out and grow the channel some. As always, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I'm putting new videos up. Hope to catch you in the next video.